Got bump steer issues? I definitely do. It's not as bad as it used to be ever since I put my car on air ride and lowered it some more. However, it is still not ideal. That's why we're gonna be installing this SVE bump steer kit. Bump steer 101, what causes bump steer? It's when your lower control arm and your outer tie rod end do not run in a parallel format to each other. So right now, my tie rod end is angled up towards the where it mates with the spindle and my lower control arm, it's on a bit of an angle too, but the tie rod is on a steeper angle. And full disclosure, my tie rod end is loose already okay so it will actually be on more of an angle if it was tight and seated both sides are the same now this situation i'm in isn't as bad as it used to be so now that i've got my car on this air ride system and i'm running a little lower these two do run more parallel than they used to when i just had a set of eibach progressive lowering springs Typically where you notice bump steer the most in these Fox bodies is when you're just lowered an inch and a half or two inches. These two items will be nowhere near parallel. And when you hit uneven roads, ruts in the highway, or you just hit a heavy bump and these two items move at the same time, but one's on one angle, one's on another, your steering wheel goes all over the place. It is something that I've dealt with on this car for many years. However, I've always been aware of it and been able to handle it. I guess you could say it's not ideal though, and you can fix it. And how you fix it is with one of these. So this SVE kit's quite cool. Definitely you get some heavy duty hardware, okay? So you get new ends for your outer tie rod ends, okay? And they run on these spherical joints. And you get new studs, okay? This bolts up into your spindle. This is your bottom half. And then all this mess of spacers and washers is so this kit can apply to as many different folks situations as possible. So you stack these spacers in on the bottom side of here. And what that does is it changes your angle as you're spacing it up or down to be in line and parallel with that lower control arm. First things first, pull both front tires and drop both tie rods out of the spindle, okay? So pull the cotter pin, pull the nut, beat on your spindle, drop your tie rod end out. I personally do not need to do that. I'm following this video after the install of my air ride kit. I never put my tie rod ends back in tight so I could do this video for you guys. Now, the reason I did that is because once you've got your tie rod ends off, you're gonna have to put your tires back on and get your car at ride height. That is where you want to adjust your tie rod ends with this bump steer kit so that you're parallel with that lower control arm. If you do this and you parallel your tie rod end with your lower control arm with your suspension fully drooped, you're done. You're back in a bump steer situation. So get your car at ride height before you go to install this kit. All right, now your car is going to need a professional alignment once you're done installing this kit regardless. However, just to get yourself somewhat back in like decently aligned format is you wanna check and make sure that this new end isn't any bigger, um, pardon me, longer or shorter than the current tie rod end you have, okay? And now we're just gonna roughly do this so i'm gonna drop this new end on here and take a look and you can see here so this is the jam nut that's up against my soon to be removed tie rod end from that point there to this point here is yeah i don't know call it almost a quarter of an inch so I need to take that into consideration. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna break this jam nut loose from my tie rod end, okay? And I'm gonna run this back 
about a quarter of an inch. I'm going to try to get a little bit more of a scientific measurement other than just eyeballing it, but run that back so I can then in turn run this into approximately where this old tie rod end used to be. All right, we're in. I still need to run my jam nut in and my nylock nut. I have, however, torqued my top nut on the tapered threaded stud that runs into the spindle, the 40 foot pounds as per spec. I have used pretty much each one of the spacers that the SVE kit comes with. Now keep in mind, every car is gonna vary slightly. So don't take how many I've used and think that's how many you gotta use. It's gonna vary from car to car. You saw me use these taller jack stands. I used them for a couple different reasons. It helped me get the weight off of the car and move the tire ever so slightly while I was horsing around with these spherical joints because they are quite tight and hard to get on the stud or can be. I also pulled my tires to torque this top stud down. It just made my life a little bit easier. However, the reason that I say all that is each and every time that I altered the suspension droop it changes this angle these two angles together okay they no longer become parallel i can't stress this enough if you're going to go to all the trouble to correct for your bump steer make sure that it's as bang on at ride height as possible obviously your car's suspension is going to travel right that's what it's designed to do but this is where it's going to spend the majority of its time is at this ride height. Unless you're driving your car down gravel, rutted up roads, this is where it likes to live. This is where you want it to be as parallel as possible. So I'm going to run these nuts in real quick and uh, we'll have a quick look at her when I'm all done. Okay, folks, I'll just give you one final look at everything all tightened up at ride height, parallel, no more bump steer. All right, guys, those of you that have stuck it out to the very bitter end, I figured I'd give you a quick little channel update as to what's to come in the very near future. Here, I have the Quick Trick Alignment Toolkit. Now, I'm gonna be setting this up on my green coupe, showing you how this works. This is one of the slickest systems I've ever seen. And I hate to tell you this, but I think you're gonna be going out and buying one shortly after I show you how slick it is. It's wild. Uh, the Kenny Bell blower, right? That is what it is. It's a long story, that one. Um, more to come, hopefully, on that very soon. How about this? My new deck lid. Kyle, my painter buddy, came through. He got it to me this weekend. It is absolutely beautiful. It's probably the nicest painted panel that's going to be on this green car. I got my fuel door back from him, too. And I'm here to tell you, I can't tell any difference. Like, he absolutely nailed the paint on that. I've also got this neat little gift that uh, Mr. Paul Hudgens, thank you sir if you're watching, sent this to me. This is one of those fox body trunk kind of beauty deals, right? Like goes on the bottom side of the deck lid. I'm going to be putting that on my new deck lid once I get the latch and all the wiring and everything in it. So stick around for that. I also have this massive LMR parts haul, okay? That is all for the average Fox. If you guys remember that 88 black LX hatch, well, that's all that gear. 
So we got a rear disc brake conversion coming on that. We got uh, power steering. Some bozo put manual steering in that car, so uh, we got to do that. Uh, carpet. Um, geez, what else? That bottom box, quite honestly, takes two guys to move. Like, it is full of interior bits and engine stuff. Like, the car's got some drivability issues, so I'm going to be doing a lot of that stuff. Lots and lots and lots of content to come. So, thanks so much for tagging along, guys. As always, I really appreciate all your views and comments. You guys are like my second family. So, if this video helped you, please share it along to others. That's how I get the word out and help the community to the best of my ability way up here in Canada. So, thanks a lot, guys. I'll catch you in the comments. Take care. Bye for now.